Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. By now, if you're building along with me, you've already built your FT Guardian version 2. In this video, what we're going to be teaching you how to do is how to bind it to the Zora radio and also how to do a pre configured file dump that will give you all the settings and everything you need to have the best experience possible with not only your Guardian, but also your Zora. The materials you're going to need in this is the computer, your built Guardian, a USB cable that has the ability to transmit data, not just power, and also your Zora radio. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So our first step in setting up our Guardian and our Zorro here is to create a new model. To do so, we're going to hold a long press down on our model button. We're going to scroll to a new one here. I'm just going to make a whole new model, so it's going to be number 9 for me. We're going to press down once and we're going to hit create new model. So we'll press down on that scrolly ball one more time and now we have that. Alright, once we've created our new model, we can go on our left side to the middle button that says page. We're going to press that one time and that's where we're going to enter our setup menu. This menu is where we're first going to be able to name our model, so let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to again press down on our scrolly ball, and as we roll our scrolly ball back and forth, we can change our different numbers. I'm just going to type out the word guardian. There's G, A, U, R. Once we have the name of our model spelled out, we can hit the return button one time. That's gonna give us back our uh, ability to scroll up and down within the setup page. Next, we wanna scroll down until we see the words internal RF. Once we found internal RF, we're gonna see mode. We're gonna to wanna to press that um, from off and roll to multi. Press your scrolly ball wheel one more time to lock it in. We're gonna scroll one more line down the type. We're gonna press our wheel one more time and we're gonna find FR Sky X. There we go. We're gonna lock that in by pressing down. We're gonna go one more level down and we're gonna go from D16, we're gonna select that and roll it to D8. You're gonna notice that when we change it to D8, it's gonna change our FR Sky X to FR Sky D. And our next step here is once we've locked that in, we're gonna go down to where our receiver is and we're gonna highlight the bind. Now the really neat thing about this is we don't have to put battery voltage on this. We can simply use USB power to be able to bind this. On our R81 receiver that we already have installed, we're going to be able to press down on our little bind button right on the top of the receiver. If you can't reach this with your finger, you can easily use a pencil or a barbecue skewer. And we're just going to hold down on that while powering it up. There we go. And then now we're going to select the rolly ball and we're going to select bind. You're going to see that the receiver is flashing. All right, the beeping stopped. Let's go ahead and disconnect this. Let's cycle the power on our radio and we'll see if we have a bind. All right, if everything worked properly here, what we're gonna see immediately on the Zorro is we have telemetry link and you're gonna see these little bars indicating that we have a signal. Also on our receiver, we're gonna see a solid red light lit up. This indicates that we should have a good strong bind between the transmitter and the receiver. Now that we have our bind, let's move on to our next step and let's configure our two main switches. One switch is going to be our arming and our other switch is going to be our mode switch, which is going to take us from angle to acro. To do this, once again, we're going to hold down a long press on our model button. We're going to select the page button and we're going to scroll over to where we see mixes. There we go. Now using our scrolly ball, we're going to go down to channel 5 and with our rolly ball, we're going to scroll down to where we see source. We're going to press it once. And then for arming, I'm going to go ahead and flip switch F. There we go. Now we can go ahead and hit our return. Our return one more time and one more time again. Now you're going to notice that our switch F is activated. Let's go down one more. We're going to select switch number six. We're going to go down to where it says source again. We're going to select that. And this time I'm going to hit switch E. Once it's indicated switch E, we can return out of that. Keep on pressing your return button until you're back at your main screen. What this is gonna give you now is two assignable switches and you can do this for any switch that you see that you wanna do for arming, for acro, for beeper, for buzzers. There's a ton of modes and you have a ton of options with these switches. I'm gonna be showing you the most basic one in this video. Now that we have our switches assigned, let's go ahead and do our configuration dump. 
As I mentioned before, a configuration file dump is basically everything you need for the radio master to be configured properly to the Guardian. Now the nice thing about this too, also things like your PID tuning, your ESC tuning, your motor direction, all this is pre-configured for you. So if you're following along this video, everything should work perfectly. To do this properly, we're first gonna connect our model. Once we connected our model and we confirmed that we're moving it around, we're gonna go ahead and go to where it says CLI. Click on CLI. And at this point, it's gonna give you the option to either uh, type in your own commands. It'll give you the option to clear your output history, uh, load from file. That's gonna be the one you want or save to file. And if you ever do a configuration dump and you wanna save what you've done, that's where you would do this. In this case, we're gonna do load from file. And if you haven't done so already, you're gonna to wanna to go to our main store page or on our forums, our resources tab, and download the configuration file specifically for the Zorro and the Guardian. Once you've downloaded that, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit load file. I'm gonna find where it says Gremlin Guardian V2 config file for Zorro. There it is. I'm gonna hit open. And at this point when I say open, it's gonna kinda of give me a little brief view of this file dump and it's gonna ask me if I wanna execute. I'm gonna say yes. So I'm gonna type on execute. And at this point, it's gonna take all that configuration, all that information, and it's gonna put that on this main screen here. Give us plenty of time to make sure the information is all put into the screen before hitting save. <laughs> this is gonna take about 20 seconds, 30 seconds to get all the information in. So about a minute later here, everything from the configuration dump file is in here. The last thing we need to do is we need to go down to where it says write your command here. We're gonna type in the word save, and we're gonna press enter. You're gonna notice the moment that we do this, the whole thing reboots. And at this point, everything that we've done with that configuration file should be saved inside of our quad. At this point, we're gonna go down through the different prompts here. We're just gonna confirm that everything looks properly. And at that point, we can go ahead and get this ready for its first flight. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slightly move my quad back and forth. When I tip the nose forward, I should see the quad nose tipping forward. When I tip it to the right, it should go right. And when I yaw left and right, it should match on the screen. That means the configuration of our board and how it's orientated is all perfect. Let's go ahead and go next to our ports. We're gonna notice that UART number two, our serial RX is uh, checked. That's perfect. Now we can go down to our receiver. And we're gonna notice as if we move our transmitter, now that we're bound, that the little quad in the picture is gonna move all the proper directions. So that means if I pitch forward, it goes forward. If I pitch back, if I roll right or left, and if I yaw roll right or left. Also, these two switches that I assigned should be working for you. So let's go ahead and check our arming. That's aux one, and that works perfectly. And let's check aux two. And again, that works perfectly. While we're on this page also, we wanna go ahead and move each one of our controls for roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, and make sure on the low end that they're at 1,000, and on the high end, they're at 2,000. That's perfect. Our elevator, again, 1,000, 2,000. Yaw, 1,000, 2,000. And throttle's already all the way down. I can see 1,000 there. When I go all the way up, I see 2,000. This is really important to do proper arming and get the fullest out of your control board with your inputs. So all that looks wonderful. Let's go ahead and move on to our next, and that's gonna be our modes. And if we did everything right, you're gonna notice that when we flip our arm switch, that it'll say arm disabled when the motors are supposed to run. When we flip it down, and I always like to have everything defaulted to down here, so when you plug this in, it's automatically disarmed. Um, you'll see that's perfect. Now for angle mode, the second one here, I want it to be on as default, which means when you take this off, it'll automatically be in a self-leveling condition. Uh, this is perfect for trainers. This is also perfect when you come into land and maybe you have a smaller area. You can flip it in angle mode. You don't have to worry about constantly flying your quad. When I flip this off on this two position switch for E, it automatically turns that off and goes into acro. Again, we'll have additional videos in the future showing you how to change these different modes, but this is a really good way to get flying quickly and also have the configuration that we like most. Last thing we want to confirm with our motors is we're going to confirm that D-Shot 300 is selected. And at this point, we can actually go ahead and wind up our motors and make sure that everything works the right way. Now, it's really, really important that you don't have your props installed during this time, because if you do and something goes wrong, you could possibly hurt yourself or the quad. So make sure your props are disassembled here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my battery. And at this point, I can make sure all my motor directions are good. I'm simply going to hit motor direction. And I'm gonna say, I understand that I've removed my props. And I'm gonna go ahead and go down to individual here. Now at this point, if I touch my motors, if I touch motor one, I should see in this case, the back rear motor. I'm just gonna hold down on the button. 
and I'm gonna be able to kind of just touch it very gently and make sure that motor's turning in the right direction, and that's perfect. Motor two, and that's perfect. Motor three, again, the right motor's firing up, and that's great. And finally, number four. And that's excellent as well, too. If for any reason, maybe you're working on the same board, but you have different motors that you're experimenting with and you have to direct solder those, it's possible for those to be backwards. All you simply need to do if it's running the opposite direction is simply hit the reverse button on that specific motor. It'll automatically make it go the other way. This saves you a ton of time in soldering and it's super easy to program. All right, we can close this out now. Friends, at this point, we're ready to put our props on and take us up for its first flight. To find the proper props in the proper direction, simply refer to this motor tab and you're gonna see the arrow, and you're gonna see the arrow that's indicated on the direction it needs to spin. It's really important that you mount your props with the numbers facing upwards and also that the props are in the right order. So take your time, make sure you compare the chart and what this says to the motor position, and let's go out and fly. All right, so we are ready to take this up for its first flight. Anytime that you're gonna be flying a quad for the first time, whether you're a beginner or whether you're advanced, make sure you have plenty of area around you. Make sure also that you're not hovering over the quad. Give it plenty of space in case anything is programmed wrong. If the quad jumps and flips or does anything weird, you wanna be in a safe area. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead, I got my radio on already. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. There we go. We got our telemetry. Everything looks good here. I'm gonna go ahead and arm it. Our motors are spinning nice and slow. We're in angle mode. Oh, that's stable as a rock. All right, so now when we roll right or left, back and forward, and turn. Let's have some fun. All right, and we'll just flip an acro here to see how that goes. Looks good. <laughs> All right. We're ready to take this out, have some FPV fun with it. Friends, thanks so much for being part of the Flight Test family. And also make sure you hit that subscribe bell because we have more quick tips, configuration videos, and build videos in store. See you next time.